You're all set back there. I'd like to call this meeting to order, please. Uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Okay, we have one absent. Uh, at this time, we'll move along and uh, we'll let the uh, county executive Jim Cruiser give the state of the county. Join me in applause and give. Good evening, Chairman Kabicki, Vice Chairwoman Brudig, ladies and gentlemen of the County Board, other elected officials, citizens of Kenosha County. It is my honor to tell you that tonight, Kenosha County is in a very strong position. We're stronger than we were yesterday, and we're gonna put ourselves in a position to be stronger going forward. Unemployment is down. Our fund balance is up, and the economic development in our area is red hot. And people are choosing Kenosha County as the place they want to live and that they want to move their businesses. One of the reasons the county is strong is because of the dedicated work of our staff and you, the Kenosha County Board of Supervisors. Tonight, we bid farewell to some of the key people who have been instrumental in helping Kenosha County achieve its goals. People like the venerable Dean of the County Board, County Board Supervisor Ron Johnson. <laughs> Supervisor Johnson tonight concludes a career of 32 years on the County Board one of the longest serving supervisors in the board's history. Ron, who was chairman of the board from 1998 to 2000, served so long because he loves this community. He's worked in this community and he wanted to give back to the community that meant so much to him. He has served with great honor and distinction. He led not with a loud voice, but with a voice of common sense. He worked always toward the big picture, the big things Kenosha County could do and should do. His word was his bond. He is a good friend and he will be missed on the county board. Thank you, Ron, for serving during this most interesting 32 years in the history of Kenosha County government. Supervisor Doug Noble has served on the county board for 26 years. Now you knew supervisors. You didn't know how much commitment you had when you ran for the county board, did you? But he uh, was 26 years and served as chairman from 2000 to 2002. County board supervisor Doug Noble gave this board an interesting perspective from time to time and made our public policy better for it. Uh, I know that he focused on many areas in the county, and one of them he was diligent on was the golf courses. And I'm happy to report, Doug, after uh, our years of agreeing and disagreeing on the golf courses, uh, they have hit their all-time closeout high in 2015 with revenues for the first time sur uh, surpassing $3 million. Uh, I want to personally thank you for all of your help on that. 
uh, and uh, all, I wish you well on all your other endeavors. And before I say my final thank you, I want to say, if we ever do have a hot air balloon at an event, we're calling you out to help release it. There you go. Thank you for your service, Supervisor Miller. <laughs> Supervisor Johnson and Supervisor Noble were on the board in 1988 when Chrysler closed its auto assembly plant in Kenosha. They were on the county board when what was now the Kenosha Area Business Alliance was created. Those significant community events changed the landscape uh, to Kenosha. It led to, in 1988, us building County Q, which is Highway 165. Um, they have been part of the board when the infrastructure improvements were needed. Without those improvements, those 12 to 15,000 people wouldn't be working out there now. And that's what helped us not only weather the Great Recession, but now we're at a lower unemployment rate, unemployment rate than prior to the recession. Also stepping down tonight are Supervisor Aaron Kohlmeyer, who has served six years. My friend David Arrington, who served, I think, six and then an additional two, eight. He has six and two in different stints. And uh, Anita Johnson, four years on the board. They all served with distinction, had many contributions, much passion, asked a lot of good fiscal questions, and uh, Kenosha County is better for your service. We all wish you best in your next endeavors and thank you for your service to Kenosha County. <laughs> we also welcome new county board supervisors as well as returning supervisors tonight, as you all will play a significant role in leading Kenosha County into the future. I look forward to working to each and every one of you as we move forward on our mission and, and our collective mission and vision to move Kenosha County forward. Our economic development gains are envied around the state and by the entire state of Illinois. That was a joke. Kind of. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Good infrastructure leads to economic development, which leads to jobs. One of the top priorities in county government is economic development. Jobs we want, we want more rooftops and people working under them. We want iron workers, concrete finishers, drywallers, painters, electrician, plumbers, HVAC, and roofers on those construction of those buildings. In 1988, like I said, we built County Trunk Q. And that was a, absolutely a tough decision at the time to take the risk where there was soybeans and cornfields. And today there's 12 to 15,000 jobs. In 2008, when I was elected, I flew down to Shelbyville, Kentucky to look at Gordon Foods because on the table was the decision for us to build 38th Street out by Bullimore Forks. The county board said, we're going to build the street. We'll deed it over to the city. Gordon Foods is a good employer. And there's going to be three or four other lots out there that someone else is going to come to. We're opening it up for good economic development. And Cabo was right in the middle of it. Who would have thought Amazon plus 1,000 jobs would have taken one of those lots? You don't know what you're going to get when you do good planning for the future with infrastructure. And then came the U-Line expansion. Pleasant Prairie, they were built right on the edge. They wanted to go into Bristol. There was disagreement on boundaries. Todd Battle, myself, sat down with Bristol and Pleasant Prairie. And we didn't let political boundaries stop economic development 
and new line expanded into Bristol in a win-win situation and created 1,300 more jobs. When new line wanted to move up from Illinois, they wanted to move to a site in Paris. Caba, Kenosha County, Virgil Gens from Paris, the mayor and I sat down. I took a long seven hours. We didn't, didn't break a heck of a lot. But in the end, we didn't let boundaries stop economic development. There's now breaking ground for seven to 800 more jobs to be out there that used to be Paris that's now in the city. Salem Industrial Park worked with Kaba again. You just saw that in today's paper. Paperwork's done. There's phone calls going on there. We're waiting for the first announcement. Um, and that's, that park's underway. And at the request of the town of Salem and the vice chair Brunig, one of the county 2016 highway projects will result in the resurfacing of Highway C from 83 down to County Trunk JF and will make the improvements to access the area for the new business park. That's what we do. We try to set it up for the private sector to come in. This county board started the High Impact Fund, working with CAVA. Since 2011, the county board appropriated approximately $2.6 million and has helped close deals on six manufacturing projects. Bradshaw Medical, that was an addition onto that complex, homegrown. Hannah Cylinders, Kenall Manufacturing, Insincorator, Niagara, Gourmet Foods, Midwest. These companies and expansions have contributed to the creation of 1,200 new jobs. The annual salary, on average, is 48,000 plus of these jobs. 128 million in new private investment and a new payroll of $57 million a year. And most recently, you might have read about the informal, dis informal discussions with Summers, town of Paris, town of Summers, the village of Summers, and the Kenosha Area Business Alliance. It is important that we support the town of Paris and the village of Summers with a new intergovernmental agreement and work with the city of Kenosha. The end game is the highest and best use for development for all of Kenosha County. Economic development should not be held back merely because of political boundaries. Kenosha Mayor-elect Antaranium, who's getting sworn in right at this time, and I have met a couple of times already in this past week, and will continue to meet with Paris and Summers to reach a resolve on this issue. The issue is about economic development and creating jobs for our children and our grandchildren. Political lines should not dampen the economic development fire that is burning in Kenosha County. A good condition of our highways, which is, which is one of the things we're here talk about and we talk to businesses about locating here. We will, as we do each year, be proactive with our paving county trunk highways. One of the biggest highway projects in 2016 will be the reconstruction and realignment of intersection county highways S and N. This work is necessary to accommodate future economic development from the highway N's reconstruction. And it sets the stage for the reconstruction of county trunk S from Green Bay Road to I-94 which will be done over the next number of years. High the high quality of our highways, the expert planning that has gone into our major highway projects, the coordination of the state highway road work, snow plowing, bike lanes, and maintenance, all of that and more has been led by our highway commissioner, Gary Sipsma. Gary, would you stand up? <laughs> Gary will celebrate his 37th anniversary with Kenosha County in July. He was hired as an engineering technician and has been a director of the Division of Highways since 1996. 
He's been the highway commissioner since 2008. Gary has been highly competent, professional, dedicated, conscientious, caring and committed to his work here for Kenosha County. I have leaned on him pretty hard on my time as county executive and he's never let the community down. Gary will retire before the next State of the County address. When he does retire, he'll be missed. Gary Sipsman's work has definitely left a positive mark on Kenosha County. I want to thank you publicly so much, Gary Sipsma, for all you do and all you have done. Thanks again. How about it, Dennis? When business executives look at locating in a community, they look at our quality of life. I know I've been in those meetings. They say, what's there to do outside of work for my family? They look for a quality of place. Is it an attractive and active place so that they can recruit and retain talent? Our Kenosha County parks are a key fe feature of our quality of place in Kenosha County. John Rudy had a lot to do with that. In the past eight years, some of the parks improvements, and I'm limited to under two hours, I'm only gonna name some of them. <clears throat> the West End KD Park, going from a shuttered gravel pit to an active park. By the way, we just received stewardship funds to do the road and parking lots over this year and next year. Three dog parks were developed without taxpayers' dollars. An award-winning petrifying spring rest restoration took place. The Kemper Center campus has improved dramatically. 45 holes of disc golf course were created. Eight plus miles of mountain bike trail by volunteers are now at Silver Lake Park. The Ice House Trail and other trails were created. We host a successful Oktoberfest, ice fishing, and other new activities have been added to our parks. Kenosha County Parks Director Jonathan Rudy has been with Kenosha County for 41 years. <laughs> Those of you who know John know he has more energy than most teenagers these days. His creative ideas are only thwarted by the fact that the rest of us have trouble keeping up to him. John is going to retire this summer, and I keep trying to ask him not to. And I can say without hesitation or reservation that all the ch changes we've seen since I've been county executive since in the last eight years wouldn't have happened without you, John. Dennis, how about it? Again, you would, you would agree. Um, you, John Rudy, and your team have made a mark on the Kenosha County Park System that will stand the test of time. Brightondale, Bristol Woods, Fox River, KD, Kemper Center, Anderson Arts Center, Old Settlers Park, Petrifying Springs, and Silver Lake Parks. Thank you for making Kenosha County a great place to play and raise a family, John Rudy. It's the people that make a difference in Kenosha County. Speaking of quality of place, a total of 609 golf courses are in the state of Wisconsin. The white birch course at Brightondale, was, and that's public and private. The white links at, the, the white birch course at Brightondale links was ranked eighth best by the state, in the state by the Golf Advisor, one of the industry's most recognized rating agencies. How about that, Mike Skalinski? You played it a number of times. Wow. Congratulations to Dan Dreyer and his team from maintenance to clubhouse. Great job. The golf courses continue to operate in the black as a result of good management and marketing and, and, and this county board support. We're, we are continuing downtown to make improvement to our Civic Center campus, which helps our current and future space needs, but it's also 
quite a benefit to the downtown Kenosha area. A number of you attended the Brookside Care Center groundbreaking last weekend, last week. This is an investment in the future of the county's top rated nursing home. Thank you Chairman Ed Kabicki and most of you on this board for your forward thinking and supporting a plan that will assure a strong future for our nursing home. I want to thank Fran Petrick and her staff for giving loving care to the re residents and their attention to detail. And for staying ahead of the game when it comes to long range planning and the knowledge of long term care needs. Fiscally, Kenosha County is very strong. In August, Fitch assigned a double A rating to Kenosha County for the Brookside Care Center project, noting solid financial performance and reserves and strong management practices, as well as growth in the tax base and a strong positive outlook. A recent year-end report to the Finance and Administration Committee showed that at the end of the year, our general fund balance is at the same level that a AAA rated government would be. Our reserves have grown to 18.25 million in 2015. That's 29.3%, much higher than the 17% reserve policy we have. I want to thank you to Chairman of Finance, Terry Rose, the Finance Committee, Dave Geertsen, and the entire finance team for getting this accomplished. For those of you new to county government, we are an arm of the state and federal government to provide those services, many of which are mandated and are assisted at many times the most vulnerable in our society. As this board is aware, we are making strides in treatment for people suffering with mental illness in our county. There is much work to be done. A lack of psychiatrists and limited space available in a Racine psychiatric hospital are a few of the concerns we need to review as we proceed proactively. A community meeting will be held at 6 p.m. on April 27th at the Job Center to review in a recently completed study of mental health issues in our county and to outline short-term and long-term recommend recommendations to tackle this issue. I urge you to attend the meeting as we work together to make better cost and efficient operations available to our residents so they get the help they need. The Kenosha County Division of Health in collaboration with Human Services, the ADRC, Professional Services Group and the Kenosha County Detention Center are working closely together on medically assisted treatment Vivitrol program. The pilot program started at the beginning of 2016 and there are just about 20 people participating in it at this time. Vivitrol has been shown to be effective treating alcohol dependence and preventing relapse to, into opiate dependence after detox. Opiate addiction is a growing problem nationwide and we need to continue our support of law enforcement efforts while treating those who are in need of assistance. The early reports on this program are very promising. The county board supported this pilot program and will keep you apprised of its progress. In other human service areas, our county works very hard to find workers for our growing list of employers. We also assist with child support collections and food shares administration. Adeline Green oversees these county services. She's worked for Kenosha County since 1990. First as an income maintenance supervisor, then in personnel as an equal employment opportunity coordinator. <clears throat> Adeline has been providing leadership and guidance as the director of workforce development since 2000. One of her recent major projects was coordinating the merger of our economic support program with Racine, known as WKRP. That's right, it's called WKRP, and it has been recognized for its high performance, and our child support has been noted 
for its significant work. <clears throat> not only do we, not only do her oversight areas win accolades, so does she. We're so proud she, all, she has accomplished. She was selected as the recipient of the Wisconsin Women in Government Graduate Seminar Scholarship in 2005. She received the Susan B. Anthony Award in 2006. She's been very active in the community, participating in numerous community boards, and volunteering for many community, community activities. She's a founding member of the Coalition for Dismantling Racism. She's a mentor to students, and she is a Kenosha County represent, representative on Sewer Pack. Adeline will retire in September after 20 years, 26 years with Kenosha County. We look forward to seeing her continue work in the community. I want to thank you, Adeline, for all your help. Stand up, Adeline, please. The people that make the difference. These are our internal champions. The work done with and for children in our community can be some of the most difficult work people can do. In February, four infants died in Kenosha County, requiring more investigations in one month than are typically encountered in an entire year. It was a heart-wrenching, an emotional time for those in the Human Services Division of Child Protective Services. April is Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Month. It also marks the 26th year since the Kenosha County social worker, Connie Reyes, tragically lost her life while serving the children and families in our community. Last week, Chris Rival, a social worker supervisor in the Division of Children and Family Services, received the Connie Reyes Award for Excellence for his work to prevent child abuse and neglect. Also last week, at the state level, he was selected to receive the Elliott Shaw Award for, professional, for a professional who has made a difference in the lives of children with disabilities. Chris Rival is retiring from Kenosha County in August after 28 years of coordinating excellent services for adults and children with disabilities and or special needs. He has dedicated his career and has lived his life helping children and adults with disabilities to have a better life. We all consider Chris a champion for children with special needs and he is viewed as an expert in his field by his peers across the state. Thank you, Chris, for all you've done for our county and for all those children who needed a voice. Thank you, Chris. Stand up. Thank you to the Kenosha County social workers and all the employees of Human Services who work to keep our children and families safe. We have excellent employees doing great things across our county, forming partnerships with other organizations and municipalities to provide better, more cost-effective services to the taxpayers. Our Information Technology Division, with a consortium of businesses and organizations, is continuing the installation of the outdoor Wi-Fi in downtown Kenosha from Carthage College to the Anderson Arts Center. There is also free Wi-Fi at the beach at Silver Lake Park, and work will begin to add Wi-Fi to Petrifying Springs Park this summer. Kenosha County has been leading also a multi-jurisdictional intergovernmental effort to promote a unified an integrated countywide commercial marketing strategy. Planning and Development Director Andy Bueller has been instrumental in this project. Together, working as a team, we look to broaden the debt tax base, create diverse jobs, and enhance the area quality of life. This will be accomplished by direct marketing by all communities, of all communities, development of a countywide website and promotion and development of quality life amenities. Now is an exciting time to be involved in Kenosha County government. The state of Kenosha County is strong 
and we'll be stronger as we continue to work on our collective vision to make our infrastructure investments that will lead to more economic development and jobs, to keep our county's fiscal condition strong, to continue our efforts to reduce waste and abuse, and delivering our many mandated county services more efficiently and effectively to all of our citizens. I look forward to all of us working together to make a Kenosha County even a better place to live, work, and raise a family. May God bless America. May God bless Kenosha County. Thank you very much. Thank you, County Executive Jim Cruiser. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to give my uh, parting uh, comments now since we got everyone's attention after Jim gave us a beautiful outlay of what Kenosha County is and what we're all about. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, County Executive Jim Cruiser, elected officials, former elected officials, my Vice Chair Bruning, my County Board colleagues, my future County Board colleagues, friends and guests. <clears throat> My parents instilled in me a strong commitment to public service. It's what's led me to a career in fire and rescue services and it, what, and it what has led me to run for the county board as well. I appreciate your confidence in me to work for you as your chairman the last two years. It's been a pleasure. I am humbled by the experience. I'm very proud of the work we've done together these last two years. We have not always agreed, but we have not been disagreeable. I am very proud of all of you for keeping that in mind as we dealt with sometimes interesting challenges. Together, we have accomplished a great deal. Last week, a number of you participated in the Brookside groundbreaking. That project was very important to me. It was very important to the community as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Brookside Care Center provides excellent care to our county residents. My own family members have been residents there, and I can assure you that Brookside's success is because of the professional care provided by the employees at Brookside Care Center. With this expansion and renovation, we can assure this county the same exceptional care for the next generation and the one after that. This county board has also approved the long overdue classification and compensation study that provides greater equity for employees and is more cost effective for the taxpayers. This county board and many of our county departments are making strides towards going paperless. Thank you to Martin LeCocq and Sean Smith and the dedicated IT staff for helping us on that journey. Thank you, sir. We have a wonderful committed and caring employees all across Kenosha County. I want to thank them for their work on behalf of the taxpayers as well. Thank you to the commit commitment of all department and division heads who always have taken the time to work with the county board and answer all our questions. Uh, Dave Gersten knows me. Uh, he can hear me coming down the hall and, and knows I'm coming to his office. He's always very accepting of me. He's the only guy you can give two nickels together, he'd rub them together and get a dollar. That's Dave Gersten. I want to thank you for your commitment to Kenosha County and your commitment to me to help make my two years very enjoyable and very forthright, and uh, I appreciate your time and concern. Also, I want to thank Jenny Tunkies for always being there, open door policy, being there, addressing any questions and concerns, bouncing my ideas off of her. Thank you very much for that. I also want to take a moment <coughs> excuse me, to thank my better half, Kenosha County Clerk, Mary Krebs, and her staff, Edie, Reggie, and Sherry. Mary, of course, has always been supportive of me personally, but I appreciate the professional work of her office. I also want to thank my Vice Chair Bruning for taking on my duties when I wasn't available to be there. I appreciate you for doing that for me. Thank you. 
Edie, Reggie, and Sherry also provide a great deal of support to the county board and are always willing to go above and beyond to make our work a success. I want to thank all of you for that as well. Again, thank all of you, the county board supervisors, who gave of your time to make Kenosha County even better every day. Thanks to the voters in my district, I will continue to work with all of you as we seek to make the necessary and sometimes tough decisions for the benefit of Kenosha County and all of its residents. Thank you. change up the uh, agenda just a little bit. I'm going to uh, be giving out the plaques at this particular juncture in the meeting tonight while I got all the attention of all the guests here. Then we'll move on to uh, citizen comments after that. But I'm going to come right down here and give out the plaques to the individuals that are departing us, okay? First plaque I'm going to give out to is to Aaron Colmeyer for his uh, six years of dedicated service to Kenosha County government. Okay. Uh, this next one goes to Douglas Noble. For his 26 years of dedicated service to Kenosha County Government. Chairman of the board, for sure, is Ronald L. Johnson. 32 years of dedicated service. So I would like to thank all the people that had confidence in me and voted for me so I had 30 years of service. I appreciate the service and I'm going to go home and uh, sit in your easy chair and relax in the next few years. <laughs> all right. <laughs> time I'd like to honor Chairman Kabicki. It's my pleasure to present this plaque to County Board Chairman Ed Kabicki. Um, Chairman Kabicki has provided the board with great guidance and leadership these past two years. He has worked well with the County Executive Cruiser and all of the elected officials as well as department and division heads. He always kept the big picture in mind and kept us from getting mired in the small stuff. Most notably he has been a champion of the Brookside Care Center project which will be appreciated by the next generation and beyond. It is an excellent legacy to leave for Kenosha County. On behalf of myself, 
all of the county board, I thank you, Chairman Kambicki, for your service. I just want to thank you for indulging in my changing the plan. I guess it's my last uh, hurrah here, so I might as well do something different, right? Uh, we'll move on to uh, citizen comments. Citizen comments. State your name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my name is Dennis Hughes uh, from AFSCME Council 32, representing Kenosha County employees. I live at uh, 144 North Jefferson Street in Milwaukee. I just want to start by thanking especially Supervisor Johnson and Supervisor Noble for their service. I know they had a lot of respect from uh, their employees and Chairman Kabicki especially um, had a lot of respect from employees. So um, I come before this board though to remind you that you have a responsibility to your employees. Um, each supervisor has that responsibility regardless of what committee you're on or what groups supported or opposed your election. Your responsibility does not end when you hire a personnel director, when your employees are afraid to go to work, when they are afraid to appeal an unjust discipline, and when they are afraid to speak out against injustices in their departments, you have a problem that it does not simply affect your employees, but the entire Kenosha County community. You cannot expect the problem to be solved by the personnel director that caused it. Bob Riedel created the grievance procedure that gives him near unilateral authority to oppose discipline on your employees. When employees have spoken up for their coworkers during the grievance process, they have been retaliated against. When employees have won their grievance uh, and, had their, and had their disciplines overturned, Mr. Riedel has refused to implement the award they earned without consequence. Despite the union's protests, the county board and finance administration committee have turned a blind eye to these injustices. For literally decades, employees have enjoyed a just cause standard for discipline, which means that management was required to administer discipline fairly and uniformly based on past decisions. After Act 10, many counties and municipalities have used Scott Walker's tools to change their grievance process and make it easier to fire and suspend employees. Many counties and municipalities have lowered their standard of review from just cause to an arbitrary and capricious standard, where a discipline or termination will stand unless the employee can prove that there was no basis for the decision or that the employee had been unfairly targeted. That is a difficult standard to meet, but at least it's a standard. Kenosha County has no standard of review at all which means management can be completely arbitrary in its dis disciplinary decisions and unfairly target employees for suspension or termination. That's no accident. The grievance of Danielle Apker is a perfect example of how an employee can be targeted and why your employees work in fear. Your personnel department granted Ms. Apker's work restriction and limited her to an eight-hour workday for six weeks. During that time, she was unavailable for overtime. That restriction was rescinded after the personnel director requested a second opinion from the county's doctor, Dr. Scott Dresden, who admitted to violating county policy by failing to meet with Ms. Apker in person and by failing to review all medical records available to him. After receiving her discipline, Ms. Apker filed a grievance. Step one of the grievance procedure was denied because her department head, Sheriff Beth, claimed he had nothing to do with the discipline. Step two was denied by personnel director Bob Riedel, who imposed the discipline. Step three was denied by an in impartial hearing officer who was selected by and had a prior relationship with the personnel director, Bob Riedel. Um, step four was a review by the Finance Administration Committee, which refused to even listen to your employee side of the story after being errone erroneously advised by Mr. Riedel that they were forced to rely solely on the impartial hearing officer's opinion, an opinion we can prove with audio and written exhibits to be dishonest. This is a disciplinary process that your employees have to have no faith in. The people involved in this process were Personnel Director Bob Riedel, Dr. Scott Dresden, IHO John Serkedich, Supervisor Jeff Gentz, Supervisor Terry Rose, Supervisor Ron Frederick, Supervisor John O'Day, and Supervisor Aaron Kohlmeyer. They decided that your female correctional officer was guilty of medical practitioner manipulation and that she could not have possibly had a medical issue that would require a work restriction. How could they possibly know better than her doctor? 
I assume most of the white males that made this decision have wives that would agree with me that they have no idea what women go through on a daily basis, especially a woman that faces abuse from inmates daily as a correctional officer at the county jail. Scott Walker's Act 10 gives employees a basic right to a disciplinary appeal to their highest governmental body. This is that body. The full county board is significantly more diverse than the group that decided Ms. Apker's grievance, which is why every employee should have their appeal heard by you, a group that truly represents the entire county, Kenosha County community. Lieutenant Croker spoke eloquently to the Finance Administration Committee last week about the improvements that have been made for mental illness at the jail, and we applaud those changes. He mentioned more than once how difficult life is for correctional officers and how much stress the job creates in their lives and the lives of their families. However, the irony was not lost on the employees in attendance that the committee had just minutes before upheld the five-day suspension of an employee that requested and received a work restriction that was based on the effects of the stress created in her role as a correctional officer. She was suspended for being unavailable for mandatory overtime during that period, but when she, was, when she served the five-day suspension, she was told she was banned from working overtime during not only the five-day suspension, but also the entire pay period Ten uh, seconds. to replace those missed hours. So being unavailable for overtime was both an infraction that necessitated a five-day suspension and an employee benefit that is limited for employees serving a suspension. Thank you, sir. That's, your time is up. I'm losing my voice. My name is Kate Wagerin. Uh, I grew up at 11111 84th Street, Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, 53158. Um, I'm Doug Noble's daughter, and I just wanted to say a quick word about his service on the board as well. Um, I was seven years old when my dad first ran for the county board, so my childhood memories are, are filled with the county board and its activities. I remember rolling up flyers and putting rubber bands on them and then tagging along as we knocked on doors and, and he explained his position and what he believed in to all the residents of his district. And he explained to them how he would make Kenosha County better. Um, after he was elected, I sat by his side as he poured through meeting materials to make sure he was prepared and representing his constituency well. I rode shotgun as he visited random county lakes or checked out remote county highways, probably like county highway trunk queue that was mentioned. Um, because it was a topic of discussion at a meeting and he wanted to be fully informed. I was his very willing audience as he practiced over and over the speeches that he would give at the county board meetings. Sometimes I would watch him on public access TV to see how the speech turned out. And usually because of the many hours of preparation that he put in, it turned out very well. My dad has been a faithful and dedicated public servant for the last 26 years. By any measurable indicator, as evidenced in county exec's speech, Kenosha County is a better place to live and work today than it was 26 years ago. And I believe that is, in part, because of my dad. That's it. Anybody else wishing to speak? There we go. My name is Ash Noble, address 5109 31st Street, Kenosha, Wisconsin, 53144. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here tonight to honor my father, Doug Noble, on his retirement from the Kenosha County Board. Dad, it's hard for me to believe it's been 27 years since you decided to run for office and 26 years of committed service to our community. 27 years. Wow, think about that. 27 years ago, you had a 12-year-old son and a 6-year-old daughter. Today, you have granddaughters that are 12 and 6 years old. <laughs> Time sure flies when you're doing something you love. So 27 years ago, you decided to pursue a lifelong dream that first began when you were just a kid in elementary school in your hometown of Rochester, Wisconsin. At this elementary school, you were inspired by a local politician as you witnessed him speak to your group of friends. I was standing next to you in the receiving line at your father, my grandfather's funeral, when I watched with pride as you told this story to that same and now much older man who had once inspired you to become a politician. And as you told this man your story, I could see the pride build in himself as you told him you were in your 25th year of service to your community. And at least a portion of that could be traced back to him. Well, Dad, you are that inspirational man to me, to my sister, your grandchildren, most of whom are here today, 
and most likely countless youth that you have met through the Youth and Governance Program. You've inspired me, Dad, not only to become involved in my local community, but to be a great husband, father, and friend. We've been talking a lot about your next phase of life and finding your next passion. Well, as Andy Dufresne says in Shawshank Redemption, I guess it comes down to a simple choice, really. Get busy living or get busy dying. I'm looking forward to seeing you get busy living. Congratulations on your retirement from the county board, Dad. Speaking on behalf of your family, we love you, and we're so very proud of you. Thank you. I just want to acknowledge uh, some of the youth and governors that are with us this evening. Um, Anna Elish from Finance Division is here. She's on my left, your right. And Tyler McCarthy from PDEC is here as well. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I moved ahead. Is there any other citizen comments out there? Okay. Any other citizen comments? Any other citizen comments? Citizen comments are closed. I apologize I jumped the gun a little bit. Move on to uh, supervisor reports. Does anybody have anything to report tonight? Supervisor Dodge, you have the floor, sir. Yes, I'd like to respond to Mr. Hughes's citizen's comments. Um, I don't think it left a, a proper um, description of employee treatments by this county board and specifically the Finance and Administration Committee. The last three appeals to the Finance and Administration Committee, the employees have won two of them. Um, that we're not a rubber stamp and we do take, uh, take our job seriously and we do review the facts and that will continue. Um, for all the employees, and I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Let's move on to Supervisor Hallman. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I met with Mr. Riedel. This is not about employment. It's good news. Uh, the mor for mortgage foreclosure program that we put in place back in 2011 is coming to an end. Um, for those of you who may recall, and I only bring this up because, Mr. Chairman, we have supervisors who are departing who are instrumental in terms of making sure that that happened for this community. So this is sort of a, a pre-update prior to the closeout. Right. Um, that program we administered as Kenosha County, it was then, shall we say, given to uh, Marquette, who was responsible for going around the state, setting up mortgage foreclosure programs across the state. Um, but we did our own unlike the other 71 counties in the state of Wisconsin. In fact, we didn't just do Kenosha, but we also set up the one for Racine um, and administered both of those counties. Um, the data that I have at the moment is from 2013. Um, I'll be crunching the information and getting to you um, after the program has closed what the result of that was. Um, basically, in short, what it was was a it was basically inserting the judge into the foreclosure process so that the banks, when people would say, you know, I, I want to work with you in terms of paying to keep my home, the banks would agree and then they wouldn't necessarily show up to court and you, the judge would look at you and be like, I thought the bank was working with you and you'd say, yeah, but the bank didn't follow through on their end. So we were instrumental in fixing that in terms of holding the banks accountable. And the late Judge Wilk was really the one who helped put this in motion. And he helped calm my anger about this because he really focused on the nature of relationships between our citizens and our residents and the financial institutions that are supposed to serve them and serve this community. So this information is dated, but I, I at least want to put this in your head so that you know what has been built off of this or at least have an idea as to what that could be. So my last count is from 2013. And the most conservative estimate that I have for both Racine and Kenosha counties um, is 2.9 million. That is the dollar value that we saved 
to both this county as well as the neighboring one. Combined, it was 2.9. Just for Kenosha, it was 1.7, and just for Racine, it was 1.3. Um, so I will be recrunching the last three years of data to get you a more up-to-date number, but for those of you that are departing that helped put this in place, I say be proud of that. In some cases, you could make the argument that you did more than members of Congress did in terms of taking on the bank, regardless of political party. So that's something to be proud of and hold your heads up about. Kept people from going homeless. And people worked very hard to keep their homes and we were able to help facilitate that process through the necessary legal channels. So thank you and tonight celebrate that when you go home. Thank you, sir. Supervisor Nobly of the floor, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, a couple of reports from the committee. Uh, in the um, UW extension portion of our meeting on Wednesday, uh, we had a presentation on one of the agenda items was the Trevor Wilmot Elementary STEM after school program. Kenosha County uh, UW extension received a grant from John J. and Ruth F. Kloss Charitable, Charitable Trust for a STEM after school program with Trevor Wilmont Elementary School. The program kicked off last spring and has been very successful. The primary goals of the program were to, number one, increase the students' interest and curiosity in science, technology, engineering, and math, hence the acronym STEM. Also, it was to increase the students' perceptions of social support and thirdly, to facilitate creative and critical thinking skills. Pam Lee, the computer teacher at Trevor Wilmont School District, had uh, seven youth attend the meeting with her from grades three through six, and they demonstrated their abilities with creating robots to accomplish several maneuvers, such as walking across the carpeting. They learned to code the robots on computers, to program the robots to do a variety of movements, and the youth were very excited about what they were learning. In fact, student after student spoke of how they love the STEM after school program and how they look forward to it every evening. Also, uh, with regards to that committee, on March 22nd and March 23rd, the committee and two youth and governance members interviewed 24 candidates for the youth and governance program coming up. Uh, I compiled the data and the committee has pared the list down to 12 individuals and the committee will be making a recommendation to the newly elected chairperson for placement on the county board standing committees for the next year starting in May. In the, uh, another portion of the meeting, which is the planning and development and, uh, portion of the meeting where we have the public hearing, there are certain things that the committee has the authority to do that do not come back to the county board. And there are some things that are gonna be on the agenda that we'll be talking about later. But the things, it's been my uh, practice in the last two years to report on the things that don't come to the committee. And one would be we passed a conditional use permit for Holy Cross Parish uh, to allow an expansion of an existing cemetery in the in an I-1 institutional district in the town of Salem. There's a related item on the agenda tonight, so we may talk more about that one. We also passed a conditional use permit to allow the expansion of an existing gasoline service station in the, in the B2 community business district in the town of Salem. That's in the little town of Trever. We passed a preliminary plot for Stephen C. Mills, Mills Enterprises, and Craig and Laura M. Baumgartner uh, in relation to the conversion of an existing condominium plot to a fee simple traditional plot. And lastly, we uh, approved the conditional use permit for Kenosha County Fair Association, Nicholas Mulvaney, agent to allow a young one year flea market use in the public uh, park recreation district in the town of Salem. Currently, they had been doing it at the Wilmot Mountain, but Wilmot Mountain is under construction uh, with a new ownership, and that was not available for the flea market this year. So having said that, that's reports on the committee things that I, my last committee that I attended. I have to say um, I was kind of blown away. I did not 
invite my children or know that they were coming. My daughter came from Milwaukee. Um, she has a little baby at home, so I was surprised to see her. Uh, my grandchildren, Grant, Amelia, and Lauren are here. Uh, I saw that my mother-in-law, my former mother-in-law was here. She walked out, and it was very nice to see them all. It's coincidental that my first and now my last county board meeting included a state of the county address. Now relax, I'm not gonna talk about all the meetings in between, but, uh, but I, I, I did think it's, uh, it's dis the disparity between the two addresses is noteworthy, and it's almost paradoxical that the same event, albeit, albeit 26 years apart, but they had entirely different messages. My first county board meeting was the first election after Chrysler closed, which the county executive mentioned. The future of Kenosha looked bleak. Lakeview Corporate Park was just a concept. Highway 165 was a little, little used county road, and Kenosha County government had only $67,000 in cash reserves. But now we have over 18 million, and again, the county executive mentioned that in his address. It was a long time ago, but I remember a snippet of the county executive John Collins address. He said, the problem with Kenosha County is brick and mortar. My interpretation of his message that evening was, if we build it, they will come. I like that movie. <laughs> uh, so Kenosha County, John Collins, and the county executive John Collins, with the cooperation of the county board, hired a firm, and we developed a plan which became the template for the infrastructure that we have today. Indeed, businesses have come and they continue to come as evident by the state of the county address tonight. Today, Kenosha County, county government is running smooth and very efficient under the capable leadership of Jim Cruiser. Over the years, I've had the pleasure to serve with so many strong and sometimes visionary elected officials. I wanna name them off, but there are far too many to mention. <coughs> Kenosha County government is also blessed with many hardworking, dedicated employees, and it's been a big, tremendous pleasure working with them. I have a great respect for the position to which I was elected, and it became a part of my identity. I want to thank the people that elected me to represent them. I found it to be, at times, frustrating, but overall a very fulfilling and rewarding experience. Thank you and best of luck to the newly elected county supervisors moving forward. Thanks, Doug. Supervisor Kohlmeyer, the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I just wanted to say a couple words uh, as well on my last e meeting this evening. Um, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve with all of you tonight. Um, it's been a privilege to serve on the county board for the past six years for myself. I, I wanted to publicly thank the constituents of the 13th district for electing me to office, allowing me to be their voice on the county board for the past few years. I wanted to thank m you, Mr. Chairman, for your strong leadership over the past two years. I wanted to thank the county executive and the previous board chairman that I've served under as well for their strong leadership and commitment to Kenosha County. I wanted to thank uh, my wife and my three kids, Ella, Evan, and Eli, who were here. They had never been to a meeting before, but it was getting past their bedtime. Um, they're excited to see their dad home uh, for more evenings in the future, and I'm excited for that as well. It's uh, bittersweet for me tonight. I've really enjoyed my time on the county board and having a chance to play a small role in the success we've all achieved together. Uh, but I can end my term tonight confident Kenosha County is in good hands and on the right path forward. Uh, I've gained much respect over the years from many of my super, fellow supervisors, the administration, the staff. I um, especially want to thank those of you who worked with me early on to help me learn the ropes, and uh, also though, to, to those of you who extended me some grace when I either put my foot in my mouth or I was still learning. Um, thank you for that. Hopefully I've left tonight a better person than when I started, and that's what I encourage of each of you as well. Um, if I can leave any parting advice to the new supervi supervisors taking uh, ownership tonight, it's uh, number one, keep an open mind. Always remember to, to re remember who you represent first. Uh, number two, keep the debate civil and debate the issues instead of personalities and, and ideologies. And number three, remember, to, no, ma remember no matter where you stand on the issues, work together um, for the good of Kenosha County and give it everything that you have. 
Uh, finally, uh, I just want to say I love Kenosha. I plan to be very much involved in the future. Um, I'm not going anywhere, uh, but it, um, I just wish you all much success in the future and I uh, hope to continue, continue the relationships I've formed uh, over the past few years. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Supervisor Arrington, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good evening uh, to all of my fellow supervisors uh, here and the uh, newly elected supervisors to uh, the Kenosha County Administration, to um, all of the citizens that are out with us tonight. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God. Uh, uh, on um, 10 years ago, uh, it was in a conversation with my father uh, where he challenged me. He was the uh, former pastor. Second Baptist Church where he challenged me in a conversation saying, what have you ever done uh, for anybody uh, that has impacted their lives? And when are you going to challenge yourself? And I asked him, what, were you what are you talking about, Dad? And he says, um, you should run for Kenosha County Board. And so with that challenge, I did run for County Board. I didn't have a, an idea of, of what I was doing. I was just... Um, basically doing it because I, I've always had a passion for wanting to be involved in my community. I've always had a passion for wanting to be um, working with people and working on behalf of people. So I've been a part of, of, of the Kenosha County Board. Um, I won the first election and then I lost in the second election and then I came back and won. I served an additional six years for a total of eight years. Um, I would like to just thank each and every supervisor that I've ever worked with, uh, the ones that are here and the ones that have gone on. Uh, I've learned something from each and every person uh, in this chamber. Uh, well, whether or not I've ever told you uh, um, what I've learned from you, whether or not I observed how you handled yourself with discussing an issue, or whether or not how you uh, carried yourself in, in, in your research of how you've looked into different things. Uh, I'd like to thank my family. I'd like to thank my beautiful wife and, and my children. Uh, my children and my wife and my family have been always supportive of me. Uh, it's no secret that I did uh, step down this year from this county board seat, but I, I love Kenosha. Uh, I did the right thing. Uh, I love Kenosha County. I love the city of Kenosha. I love all the people in the 10th district that voted for me the four times that I served them. And I love all the administration. I thank you all for everything that you've ever uh, allowed me to have input in. And I just want to see Kenosha continue to be positive and continue to move forward. I'm very confident that God is challenging us in these pivotal times, not only in Kenosha, uh, but in the state of Wisconsin and the United States of America. Uh, but the one thing I can say about Kenosha is that we are trendsetters. We do things first, and other people follow our lead. And we don't need to, to lose that as Kenosha County. People look at Kenosha County in Wisconsin and they say, hey, they're down there doing it. And so that's something for us to always be proud of as county board supervisors. I'm extremely proud to have served with you. Uh, I'm, I'm excited that we have new supervisors with new ideas and new, new uh, opinions in the way that they're going to bring things uh, to this board in, in a very positive way. And I thank you. I, I thank each and every one of you. Uh, for the ones who, who reached out to me and called me um, after I stepped down, I thank you for reaching out to me. My family thanks you uh, for reaching out to me. I just want to say God bless you. Uh, I'll definitely be involved in the community. Uh, one thing that I said earlier today is that um, a chapter ends in your life, but your story's not over. And that's the one thing I want to leave with each and every person that's leaving the county board. This chapter of our lives has ended participating as Kenosha County Board of Supervisors, but there's another chapter in your life to be written, and our story is not over yet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Seeing no other supervisors, we'll move on to new business. County Clerk. Ordinances, one reading, 26, from the Planning Development Extension Education Committee, an ordinance regarding Stephen C. Mills, Mills Enterprises, LLC, 
and Craig T. and Laura M. Baumgarten owners, Dan Skipsip, agent, and ordinance requesting a rezoning from C2 Upland Resource Conservancy District and C1 Lowland Resource Conservancy District with a plan unit development overlay to C2 Upland Resource Conservancy District and C1 Lowland Resource Conservancy District with a planned unit development overlay, Town of Salem. Noble, yes. Decker, yes. Galitsky, yes. Retzloff, yes. Gable, yes. Supervisor Noel. I move ordinance number 26. Ordinance number 26 been moved by Supervisor Noble, seconded by Supervisor Decker. Supervisor Noble. This property is located on the north side of State Highway 50, which is also 75th Street, approximately 1,000 feet west of the intersection of 261st Street. The rezoning would reflect the wetlands on the property as field delineated. The Town of Salem recommended approval of the request, and so does the committee. Thank you, sir. Seeing no lights, simple majority vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, passes. County Clerk. Ordinance 27 from the Planning Development Extension Education Committee, an ordinance regarding Holy Cross Parish owner, Bill Malin agent, requesting a rezoning from 1-1 one, one Institutional District to PR-1 Institutional District to I-1 Institutional District, Town of Salem. Noble, yes. Decker, yes. Galitsky, yes. Rutzloff, yes. Gable, yes. Supervisor Noble. I move ordinance number 27. Ordinance number 27 has been moved by Supervisor Noble, seconded by Supervisor Skalitsky. Supervisor Noble. This property is located on the south side of County Highway C, Wilmont Road, at the intersection of County Highway B, Tuttle Road. The rezoning would allow for the expansion of the cemetery. There's a, a, an existing cemetery there, and they want to expand it. The Town of Salem recommended approval of the request, and so did the committee. Thank you, sir. Simple majority vote, seeing no lights. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, passes. County Clerk. Resolution 89 from the Finance and Administration Committee, a resolution regarding 2015-2016 carryover and annual closeout. Rose, yes. Ron Frederick, yes. Kohlmeyer, yes. O'Day, yes. Brunig, yes. Dodge, yes. Gens, yes. Supervisor Rose. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, on behalf of the Finance and Administration Committee, I would move Resolution 89. Resolution 89 has been moved by Supervisor Rose, seconded by Supervisor Ron Frederick. Supervisor Rose. Thank you. Uh, super, uh, resolution number 89 is a uh, what they call a carryover resolution. It's an annual routine uh, adoption of a resolution closing our books and authorizing that the various projects and expenses listed in the resolution uh, be carried over to the year 2016 in this case. These are all items that were in the 2015 budget were adopted and approved by this board after debate. <coughs> However, these various items have not been spent uh, for various good reasons, and uh, therefore it is a matter of practice that they be carried over and the money used for the purposes listed in the various budgets in the year 2016 and that our budget be so amended. The list of items that you can find on pages 15, 16, and 17. Thank you. Uh, seeing no lights, the roll call has been requested. Well, you got something to say? Supervisor Ritzoff, you yes, have the floor. I, I, thank I missed you, your light there. Sorry about that. It's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a real quick question. Through the, can I ask uh, uh, Mr. Gertson through the chair a question? Gerson's <clears throat> at the podium. I noticed on page 16, there's a number of 300,000 that's re is labeled as uh, reserves, and it's labeled as additional opportunities arisen to expand parking to accommodate employees' needs and improve the civil civic center appearance. Uh, two questions. Can you explain that? And the third question is, I know our goal is to get AAA bond rating, and that's an tremendous goal. I know we're close to this. Would this affect that um, by taking $300,000 out of our reserves? Would that put it below the, our, our goal of, I think, 29%? And if it doesn't, um, I guess I'm just curious as to the figure, if you wouldn't mind. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. Uh, the 300,000, the, the second part of your question, uh, Supervisor Retzliff, 
uh, that's, that's the easiest part. It has no effect. Uh, the 29 percent that we presented that you saw in the executive's uh, state of the county address, this is already d deducted out of that. So it would have no effect on the number that was presented to you, to you tonight. And the first part, what's the purpose? Uh, you're aware that we've been working on uh, uh, acquiring uh, certain properties, uh, some of them in the downtown area, some in some other strategic locations. This would allow us to continue that and there are some targeted uh, properties that we would like to move ahead with and this would permit us to do that. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else on this particular resolution? A roll call has been requested. Vote yes if you're in favor or no if you're against, please. Abstain on it. Go ahead and do that. Okay. Passes. Thank God for that. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna go each one individually, Doug. Just for the record, okay? Okay. All right. <coughs> okay. Uh, I can I can read them all to, all at once, and then he can speak on. Let's go one at a time. That's, that's what we're gonna do. It. Okay. Resolution 90 from the Planning and Development Extension Education Committee, a resolution regarding a request to approve the appointment of David N. DeVito to the Kenosha County Zoning Board of Adjustments. Noble, yes. Decker, yes. Galitsky, yes. Retzloff, yes. Gable, yes. Supervisor Noble. I move resolution number 90. 90 has been moved by Supervisor Noble, seconded by Supervisor Retzloff. Supervisor Noble. This resolution would appoint David N. DeVito to the Kenosha County Zoning Board of Adjustments. Mr. DeVito will succeed Kay Gorgon and will serve until June 30th, 2017 or until a successor is appointed by the county executive and confirmed by the Kenosha County Board of Supervisors. The Planning, Development and Ex Extension Education Committee reviewed the appointment at their meeting on April 13th, 2016. Uh, Mr. DeVito attended the meeting, answered questions from the committee, and the committee recommends approval. Thank you. Seeing no light, simple majority vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, passes. County Clerk. Resolution 91 from the Planning, Development, Extension, Education Committee, a resolution regarding a request to approve the appointment of Christopher Brown to the Kenosha County Zoning Board of Adjustments. Noble, yes. Decker, yes. Galitsky, yes. Retzloff, yes. Gable, yes. Supervisor Noble. I move resolution number 91. Resolution 91 has been moved by Supervisor Noble, seconded by Supervisor Gable, Supervisor Noble. This resolution would appoint Christopher Brown to the Kenosha County Zoning Board of Adjustments. Mr. Brown will succeed Kenneth Kazabowski and will complete that term until June 30th, 2016 or until a successor is appointed by the county executive and confirmed by the Kenosha County Board of Supervisors. The Planning Development Extension Education Committee reviewed the appointment at their April 13th, 2016 meeting. Mr. Brown attended that meeting, answered questions from the committee, and the committee recommends approval. Thank you. Seeing no light, simple majority vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? Passes. County Clerk. Resolution 92 from the Planning Development Extension Education Committee, a resolution regarding a request to approve the appointment of Robert W. Mary to the Kenosha County Land Information Council. Noble, yes. Decker, yes. Kalitsky, yes. Retzloff, yes. Gable, yes. Supervisor Noble. I move resolution number 92. Resolution 92 has been moved by Supervisor Noble, seconded by Supervisor Decker, Supervisor Noble. This resolution would appoint Robert W. Mary uh, sewer back civil engineering to the Kenosha County Land Information Council. Mr. Murray will be succeeding Dr. Kurt Bauer and will serve until July 1, 2017 or until a successor is appointed by the county executive and confirmed by the Kenosha County Board of Supervisors. The Planning, Development and Extension Education Committee reviewed the appointment at the April 
13th meeting and recommends approval. Thank you. Seeing no lights, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? County Clerk. Resolution 93 from the Planning Development Extension Education Committee, a resolution regarding the amendment of the final plat of Woodhaven Meadows subdivision, Kevin J. Deaton, Woodhaven Meadows LLC agent, to reduce the rear yards. Uh, and move that money, the proceeds of those sales, back into the highway capital budget. But we, we need to order this bucket truck because we're in high season. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is a budget modification. So Roll call's been requested. Vote yes if you're in favor or no if you're against. Passes. County Clerk. Resolution 95 from Public Works Facility and Finance Administration Committee, a resolution regarding permission to place and display a U.S. Army asset in Petrifying Springs Park at Armed Forces Memorial. Facility and Public Works, Elverman, yes. Grady, yes. Boyd Frederick, yes. Skalitsky, excused. Poole, yes. Finance, Rose, yes. Ron Frederick, yes. O'Day, yes. Kohlmeyer, yes. Gens, yes. Brunig, yes. Dodge, yes. Supervisor Elverman. I move Resolution 95. Resolution 95 has been moved by Supervisor Alverman, seconded by Supervisor Ron Frederick. Supervisor Alverman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a, a cannon howitzer that Mr. Rudy has been after for a long time. Um, <laughs> that, is he gone? He's gone. He's, anyway. He's, he's looking for the cannon now. There's a lot. There's a, there's a whole lot of red tape when you're dealing with the federal government. Um, can of cannon. We were told we have this cannon a year ago, but all of a sudden, some more little things come up. So anyway, now we need a county board uh, resolution for to give permission for this decommissioned asset, government asset, to be placed on our park. It is uh, part of a uh, Eagle Scout project, uh, and it has taken a couple years here. We've been waiting for this. We are told that it will be with the passing of this resolution put on the fast track and we may get it before Mr. Rudy leaves or we can just send him pictures. Thank you, I, sir. I, I would ask for your approval. Seeing no lights, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. County Clerk. Resolution 96 from the Planning Development Extension Education Committee, a resolution regarding the plat of fifth edition to Holy Name Cemetery, Holy Cross Parish owner, Bill Malin agent, Town of Salem. Noble, yes. Decker, yes. Skalitsky, yes. Retzloff, yes. Gable, yes. Supervisor Noble. I move resolution number 96. Resolution number 96 has been moved by Supervisor Noble, seconded by Supervisor Gable. Supervisor Noble, you have the floor. This property is located on the south side of County Highway C, Wilmot Road, at the intersection of County Highway B. This item is in relation to the rezoning for the expansion of the cemetery. The Town of Salem recommended approval, and so did the committee uh, recommend approval. Thank you. Seeing no lights, simple majority vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, passes. Claims, Alex S. Prisian, vehicle damage. Refer to Corporation Council. Approval of the April 6, 2016 minutes by Supervisor Blau. Supervisor Blau. I move to approve the minutes for April 6, 2016. They've been moved by Supervisor Blau. Is there a second? Second. second by Supervisor Esposito. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Does someone give me a motion to adjourn Sunday? No move. It's been moved by Supervisor Grady. Is there a second? Second. Second by Supervisor Gable. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, very good. Go five. Seats, please. We want to continue the meeting tonight? Sign them. I can give them back to us. Okay. That's fine. 
Yeah, any any new supervisors, just find an uh, open seat and take it for now, okay? No, that's all right. That's an open seat. There you go. Okay. Do I have to take another roll call? We're doing a no, we can't. No, that's right. Huh? What do you want? We're doing a roll call like this. Oh, she's gonna do it. She's doing a roll call over here. Okay. So the new board's set up. All right. All right. We're gonna do that by hand. We're gonna move on to I think the oaths of office now, right? No, I'm gonna do roll call supervisors. Oh, okay. Good. I'll call off the names and they can say they're. I yes, they're here. All present. right. Listen up. Until we get the new board set up with all your names on it, we're just going to do a, a, a oral Voice call. roll call. Grady? Here. Just yell here. Okay. <laughs> Rose? Here. Gens? Here. Gable? Here. Dodge? Here. Kabicki? Here. Hellman? Present. Bostrom? Here. O'Day? Here. Berg? Here. Frederick? Ronald? Here. Blau? Here. Franco? Here. Boyd Frederick? Here. Retzloff? Here. Esposito? Here. Wambolt? Here. Gilmore? Here. Skalitsky? Here. Poole? Here. Brunig? Here. Decker? Here. Alverman? Yes. Okay, all of our present. Uh, we'll move on to the old of office. Okay. Um, actually, I'd like everyone to stand. Raise your right hand. After I say I repeat, everyone say your name at once. Your position is county board supervisor, and then the number of your district. So I. I. District six. Having been duly elected to the office of. Having been duly elected to the office of. County board supervisor. District. But have not yet entered upon. But not yet entered upon. The duties thereof. The duties thereof. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability. And will faithfully discharge the duties of the office to the best of my abilities. Congratulations, everyone. We're going to pass, we're, well, you're doing the nominations. We're going to pass out. So you got who's nominating. We're going to go move on to the nomination of the chairperson. Supervisor Alvin, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm channeling uh, two of the finest supervisors I've ever worked with here on the County Board, Ann Burgo and Eunice Boyer, uh, either of which would have been a, a spectacular County Board Chairman. So tonight, in honor of them, I am going to nominate who will be our first female County Board Chairman in Kenosha County's history, uh, Supervisor Kim Bruning. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second by Supervisor Rose. Okay, so is there any other nominations? I, I'd, I'd like to oh, speak on I'm it. Sorry, then, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, just very briefly, uh, in my opinion and the opinion of uh, many people, Supervisor Bruning has done this uh, right for Kenosha County. She has put in her time, but not time just sitting at a desk. She's been active since the. Uh, before the time she got here, I remember when I was chairman, she was in the audience watching and, and learning when Supervisor Gorlinski was going to be stepping down and she was thinking about running for his seat. Uh, then she has served on the Finance Committee. Naturally, everyone knows, as served as the vice chair of the county board, uh, chairman of planning and development for four years, and those of us that have served as chairman of a major committee know the time and effort that goes in and the knowledge that you garner 
from that. And Supervisor Bruning has garnered um, a lot of experience. The knowledge, I think, that it will take, the commitment, I think, that it will take to serve as County Board Chairman. So I would uh, urge a, a unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Elverman. Is there any other nominations for chairperson? Any other nominations for chairperson? Two years. Seconds. Okay, it's been moved by Supervisor Ron Frederick, seconded by our newly elected supervisor to move her along unanimously as presented. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Passes unanimously. Kim Bruning is the first county board chairwoman in Kenosha County history. Aye. to nominations of vice chair and I see Supervisor Grady has the floor sir. Uh, thank you Mr. Chairman. You talked some length this evening about tenure and experience here in the county board. Uh, the person I'm about to nominate the gentleman on my right John O'Day has served with distinction for this county board and I would enter his name as nominee for vice chair. Is there a second for this nominee? It's been seconded by Supervisor Ron Frederick, Supervisor Grady, you have the floor again. And I'll just speak on this briefly. I believe most of the supervisors in this room have received a little synopsis of Mr. O'Day's career here with the county, committees he served on, especially finance, very long tenured member there. So I don't know if it requires any further elaboration, but recommend him without hesitation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's see one other light on. Supervisor Gens, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to take this opportunity to nominate uh, Supervisor Esposito for Vice Chair. Is there a second for that? Second. It's been seconded by Supervisor Rick Dodge. Supervisor Gens, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be brief, too. Um, Dan's a, a great guy, a family man, a business owner, two-time chair of, of Judiciary and Law. But despite all that, I, I think what strikes me most is his willingness to listen and communicate and come to compromise and I think those are three things that we really need to focus on on, on this board and, and he listens to everybody no matter what their opinion is or where they lean or what they do and I think that's an, an asset to uh, leadership in the county board and I think uh, Supervisor Esposito will will do very well in that position so that's why I'm nominating him thank you thank you sir Seeing no other lights, the clerk and the staff will move out and give out uh, ballots. You can write the name of our two nominees on the ballot, please, and uh, she'll pick them up when completed. I have no idea what she said. You got to ask her.
דוגמה? Esposito. 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 O'Day. Esposito. 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 O'Day. Esposito. 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 O'Day. O'Day. Esposito. Esposito. O'Day. O'Day. Esposito. 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 And Esposito. 17 for Esposito and 6 for O'Day. Supervisor Esposito is the next Vice Chair of Kenosha County. working on it, but you can go ahead. We don't know everybody's sitting, so it's kind of a mix up. We can do that. I need this. Before we move on, I'd just like to make some quick remarks here. Um, I'd like to thank everyone that is uh, from here from administration and the staff, um, county board supervisors, past, present, and, uh, and uh, the ones that have just recently left. Um, 10 years ago yesterday, um, I stepped onto this very floor as a newly elected county board supervisor. I'd like to thank my predecessor, Tom Gorlinski, for putting me on this incredible path. During my tenure, I've learned many things, built amazing relationships, and I've been honored to have championed for this community. 10 years ago, I would have never thought I'd be sitting here today as the first chairwoman of Kenosha County. This honor is not taken lightly, and I want to thank the support of several people. First and foremost, my children, Samantha and Kyle. My friends that have listened and counseled me, 
Joe Clark and Mark Melinaro for being my mentors, and all of the supervisors that have worked with me for the good of the county. With today's convening of the new term, I congratulate all supervisors on your election, and especially congratulate the new supervisors that bring new optimism, new ideas, and new commitment to our county. Each of us brings to the board shared values, commitment to this county, and a wide variety of personal experience. While some of the re-election efforts divided opinions, we must set aside these divisions and come together to continue to move this county forward. It is my commitment to you as chairwoman that we will promote a culture of unity. We will set aside personal and political agendas and put the county first. I'm proud to announce the Kenosha County First Initiative. This initiative is very simple and in two parts, mental health and forward growth. Addressing the Addressing the growing issue with mental health in our community is a big piece of the initiative. On April 27th, we will, be, we will hear from the administration on the mental health report, and in return, we will put in place a feasible and effective plan to address mental health issues in our community. Many of you campaigned on this issue, and I look forward to partnering with you to address this. The second piece of this agenda is forward growth. We're tackling issues of rising cost of health care to issues of the state cutting back on mandate funding or improving county infrastructure, putting the gears to work on how we will continue to put our future growth forward and put Kenosha, put Kenosha County forward. As Eleanor Roosevelt once said, understanding is a two-way street. Let us stand together to continue to move our county forward, seeking common ground for common good. Thank you. As a reminder, everyone should have their oath of office. Please make sure that it's filled out and returned to Mary, our clerk, by the end of tonight. We will continue with our agenda, new business. Ordinance first reading to required, amendment of MCKC Chapter 2, County Board Rules of Procedure. Refer to Legislative Committee. Resolution one reading from Supervisor Blau, a res resolution recognizing Bike to Work Week. Refer to Public Works Committee. <laughs> communications, uh, communications from Andy M. Bueller regarding future items scheduled before the Planning Development Extension Education Committee. Receive and file. I have a motion by Supervisor Decker to adjourn, and the second was by Supervisor Skalitsky. All in favor? Aye. Motion. We're adjourned. Thank you.